What's going on guys? This is Waylon Martin with Bodybuilding.News. Today we're going over the legacies of Kevin Lavrone, Ken Flex Wheeler, and Ronnie Coleman. These three started and ended their careers neck and neck with each other. And although Lavrone would get the early advantage, it was Coleman that would finish the decade of the 90s on top. You can't forget guys like Dorian Yates, Sean Ray, and Chris Cormier, who would come in and mix things up as well. But these three would really set the tone for the 1990s and early 2000s. Although Coleman and Wheeler would face off earlier in 1991, it was Lavrone who would be the first to get the pro card, defeating both of them at the MPC Nationals that year. And although Wheeler would come in second at that year's Nationals, as well as in that year's MPC USA's, beating Coleman both times at those contests, Coleman would actually get a professional card as well, winning the World Amateur Championships, which would qualify him for IPB professional status and leaving Wheeler unqualified until 1992, when he would come back to the MPC USA's, this time winning it. Lavrone, who had shocked many in 1991 when he barely lost to Paul DeMeo at the Juniors and then went on to win his professional card at the MPC Nationals, continued to drop jaws when in 1992 he placed second as an IFBB rookie bodybuilder only behind Dorian Yates. As fantastic showing that he had at this contest, a lot of his momentum would be taken by Flex Wheeler the following year, who would win an Arnold competition to start the season and end it, finishing up in that second place behind Dorian where Lavrone had just the year prior, with Lavrone falling to the fifth place spot. In 1994, however, the tides would turn in Lavrone's favor yet again. This is because Flex Wheeler suffered a devastating car accident that would leave him unable to compete the entire 1994 season. On a lighter note, Wheeler was able to participate in a death row music video with participants such as Snoop Dogg. In Wheeler's absence, Lavrone would be able to go back up into the third place position. But in 1995, it's 1995. Lavrone would end up placing in second place yet again at the Olympia. While Flex Wheeler had won three professional contests that season, he fell to eighth place in his comeback. Don't call it a comeback. This was the first year we'd really hear some noise from Ronnie Coleman as well, who would win his first IPB professional event in Canada which would qualify him for the Olympia where he'd come in 11th place. In 1996, Coleman would get his first win over Flex Wheeler at the Canadian Pro. This is the show that Coleman was the champion of just the year prior. However, Flex Wheeler would win two other contests throughout the year over Coleman. Wheeler's other major loss that season would be at the 1996 Arnold Classic, where Kevin Lavrone would relegate him to second place. And again, later in the year, when Wheeler would come in fourth place at the Olympia, Lavrone would finish directly above him in a third place position. Ronnie Coleman, improving his placing but still at the bottom of the pack, would come in sixth. In 1997, Flex Wheeler became the heir apparent Olympia title, if not the one who could potentially knock off Dorian that year. Wheeler would defeat Ronnie Coleman at every contest the two entered, and Coleman would get his first win over Kevin Lavrone. But at the 1997 Mr. Olympia, Flex Wheeler didn't show up citing a physical altercation many call the ninja incident, and some believe to be a fabricated story. Friday afternoon, um, she had to rush me to the hospital because I was in a lot of pain and I was swollen. They both sustained more serious injuries than I did. Though Lavrone had been defeated by Coleman earlier in the year, he would place above him at that year's Olympia, getting fourth to Ronnie Coleman's ninth. 1998 marked the beginning of the reign of Ronnie Coleman who would come in and win the Olympia in dominating fashion, with Flex Wheeler coming in second place. And this was not without challenge, as Flex Wheeler and many guys up there looked phenomenal, with full condition, striation, etc. But that just goes to show how good Ronnie Coleman was during his prime. He was handedly able to beat the best at their best, making him one of the most dominant Olympia champions ever. In 1999, the script would flip from 1997, where Coleman had been defeated by Wheeler every show he entered, because Wheeler would be put in second place at every contest he competed in that year, directly behind Ronnie Coleman. If you ain't first, you're last. Wheeler would again end up in second place behind Coleman at that year's Olympia, and Kevin Lavrone would end up in the fourth place position, behind the both of them, ending the decade in the bottom of the pack, when he had started with the initial lead. Coleman would continue to dominate through the early 2000s, but the year 2000 marked the beginning of the end for Flex Wheeler's career. As at the end of the 1999 season, Wheeler would be made aware of the kidney issues that would haunt the rest of his bodybuilding career. 
On a positive note, Wheeler would start the year 2000 winning another Arnold Classic title. But Lavrone would get the last laugh that year over Wheeler, as he would end up in second place behind Coleman, while Wheeler would end up in third place. Shortly thereafter, Wheeler announced his retirement from bodybuilding. Although this was short-lived, it would keep him out of the 2001 season nonetheless. In that time, Coleman would continue his reign at the top, and Lavrone would come in third place. But it was in 2002, a decade from his first time getting runner-up at the Mr. Olympia contest, that Kevin Lavrone would yet again end up in the second place spot. This time, instead of behind Yates, it was behind Coleman. And though his best days were soon to be behind him, Flex Wheelers had already come and gone, falling to seventh place at that year's Olympia, making a comeback effort of sorts, and failing to even qualify the next year. And while Coleman would win another title in 2003, this would also mark the end of Kevin Lavrone's bodybuilding career to this point, where he would finish sixth place at the Mr. Olympia contest. Ronnie Coleman has gone to show what happens when you have the potential and you stick it out long enough to see it through. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Well, either three of these guys could have potentially been a Mr. Olympia at any point, it's no coincidence that Ronnie Coleman was consistently on top. Woo! There always seems to be a type of mutual respect and camaraderie of sorts between them, as they've been in the trenches with each other and against each other. When looking at any one of these guys' careers, it's impossible to not take note of the other two. And that's why they're a very important trio and in many ways have come to define one of the golden eras of bodybuilding. Guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and share, etc. This is Waylon Martin with Bodybuilding.News, out.